What did Jesus tell them that day? He told them, care about what I care about. I love the whole world. I just died for it. And you are my hands and feet. You're my ambassadors. If you'll go, I'll be with you. And then Jesus said in John 17, Oh God, I pray not for the world. Now he's refocusing for a minute with these friends. And so I, somehow, I don't know how they recorded it, but it's written. I don't know whether the Holy Spirit just told them or whether they were actually listening as he prayed. But apparently he prayed, Lord, I pray not for these. I pray not for the world, but I pray for these that you have given me. They've received the message you gave me to tell them. And now they're no longer mine, but they're yours. And I have kept the faith. I've run the race. And now they're together. When Stalin left, his core fell apart. When Martin Luther left, his core fell apart. When Hitler left, his core fell apart. When Jesus Christ left, his core came together. One of those marvelous opposites. That's the power of Christ, because he's the reconciler. Everything other than Jesus Christ is a divider. It's only a caricature, an imitation, a fake of the real thing. But the world goes for it. And that's what's going to happen in the Antichrist. He's going to be a wonderful, lovely person like Lucifer. And we'll fall for it, hook, line, and sinker in those days. He'll sound like Christ, probably look like Christ, act like Christ, but he won't be Christ. Be a fake. And Jesus said, now I pray not for these, but I pray for all of those that will believe through them. What a strategy for world evangelism. And then you know how close he said he wanted us to be? He said, I want you to be, oh God, Oh, Father, make these 12 and all those that will believe on them, on you, through them, as one as you and I are. Now, how close are the Father and the Son? Same. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, that's unity. The Viet Cong, Hitler, Mussolini with the black shirts. The one thing in every one of their oath is we pledge to be totally unified even to death. It's written right there. You can put a Bible verse by every one of those things that they've written in the Pentagon. You can put a quote from Jesus by, they all have a world view. World communism. That's their plan. Men of prayer. Men of the word. Men who have a world view. And men that put Christ before others. Christ before self. Christ before possessions. And then he gave us a final commandment. A new commandment I give you, Jesus said one day to them, that you love one another. Another master plan for evangelism. And the whole world will know you're my disciples if you love each other. It is no problem, I can even do it without Christ, to love those who I'm trying to influence and sell cars to. Sell Christ to. I treat drunks and alcoholics and unwed mothers and battered wives better than I do the choir director, the pastor who preaches overtime, the Sunday school teacher who's got her doctrine off. We don't treat each other very good. And the world says, behold how they don't love one another. What kind of a witness is that for Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ said the mark of a believer is the way we love each other. That is what takes the power of the Holy Ghost, not to love the people. I don't stay awake at night mad at Hitler. I stay awake at night when my wife's mad at me, or I'm mad at her, or my kids. It just breaks my heart. I can't, I, if I'm having a problem with Jen, I can't even come and talk to you. I say, you're not going to make me talk to these people, and we can't even be reconciled. Breaks me up. That's the test of love is the way we love each other. That's the character of a disciple of Jesus Christ, a characteristic. And then finally, just before leaving, he said, but you shall receive power when what? When the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Now, dear friends, there is not a single person since the dawn of history 
that has been an instrument of Jesus Christ or of God the Father who has not been anointed and empowered by the Holy Ghost. That it has never happened. Without Christ, without the Holy Ghost, without the Father, you can do nothing. If you think you've done something without Him or without the Holy Ghost, you've deceived yourself. And I have thought many times I have. Because He's the master deceiver. That's His business, to deceive. To this devil, that's His operation. And He makes it look like I've done something great, even for God. But what isn't of the Spirit is not of God. As men as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The character, the characteristics, the attributes that Dr. Mitchell, that Dr. Tozier said those days that the characteristics of a man of God, he's a man of the Word, he's a man of prayer, he's a man who puts Christ before others, Christ before self, he has a world view, he's a man of unity, and he's a man of love, and he's a man who's filled and anointed and empowered by the Holy Ghost. Those are the fundamentals of the Catechism of Luther. Those were the methods of Wesley. They called him Methodist. You know, his critics said he's a method. You, you accept this great invitation to love God and fear God and give me your hand. Give him your hand and he'll have you into the methods. That's where the word Methodist came from. He had methods of prayer, methods of the Bible study, methods for witnessing, methods for everything. And then he had a guy over you to check to see that you did it. <laughs> when they lost that, the Methodist church began to wane. It was once the largest lay community in the history of the world. But they forgot the methods. 